Okay, ladies and gentlemen, Uper Jim here. Uh, solar experiment number two. This is going to involve uh, two 35 amp hour batteries, 1000 watt inverter, 500 watt solar controller. All right, and cheap Walmart refrigerator. And We have a Rock Pals uh, 100 watt solar panel. Okay, so the question is, and I've seen a lot of these, uh, these videos out here, can you power a refrigerator? Uh, indeed, you can. Okay, so let's take a look at the solar, the solar controller here. As you can see, we're getting. Uh, maximum solar right now it's about not maximum solar but it's five o'clock here in Michigan on in August and let's see how many watts we're pulling in about 2.2 watts uh, this time of the day not bad okay the refrigerator is cycled off right now um, the refrigerator should uh, pop in again you'll see the, uh, the volts go down or the yeah the volts will go down from 14.3 to probably about 13.5 so this is a fully fully charged battery bank okay so uh, again there's the batteries the refrigerator right now chilly about 33 34 degrees I don't have a temperature on it but, but uh, these adult beverages are nice and cold right now and again, we got a. You got to have at least a, a thousand watt inverter because you have that initial surge. And even though the surge is um, like 500 watts, your normal 750 watt inverters probably aren't going to give you that. So it helps to get yourself at least a thousand watt inverter here. All right, I picked this one up at Harbor Freight. That was about ninety dollars. And uh, from my other videos, you know that the solar controller is a little. It's one of their better ones. It's got the uh, five hundred watt capacity. So um, you can't hook this directly to the um, to the controller because five hundred watts will be exceeded by that initial surge for the refrigerator startup. So what you have to do is you got to get some pretty good good sized cables here as you can see here and hook them directly up to your battery bank. So this particular inverter here's the negative hooked up to this negative and the positives over here that that controls your inverter. This negative over here can and this positive over here goes to the solar controller. Okay, as you can see again, we're 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 doing real good with the uh, 100 watts of power. Okay, and the refrigerator is powered up and uh, it's cycled off right now. I want to try to see if we can't uh, uh, see this thing fire up here. Usually, about every 10 minutes, your your refrigerator will will fire up. And so we'll go back to that here in a second. And again, sunshine here. You know, late afternoon. In August, we're getting pretty decent sun. You know, you do this during the uh, you know peak of the day, you're probably going to be pulling in close to four watts of uh, power off of this uh, solar panel. That's about the best I've ever done. You know, again, we're in Michigan here, so even though it's summertime, this is not Arizona. How do I have this hooked up wired wise? I have it hooked up through the uh, the MP4, which is what the panel comes through, and I bought a SAE, so it's an MP4 to an SAE, and I just kind of have them temporary rigged up here. I'm going to change this. I'm going to get some thicker wires, but for right now, it's 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 bringing in the solar, and it's doing pretty good. And the refrigerator itself, um, we bought this just the Walmart. $65 model and it, uh, it it does pretty well 
I'll, I'll pull the rock pile up here. I'll show you how it works there so we can get an idea of the, the wattage in another video. I have the, the rock pile's 300. Let me show you that. And I did have this, this rock pile's out in South Dakota and, and Marquette with me. And uh, again, this is a good little unit. But I have hooked it up to that refrigerator, you know, through the AC. And I did notice that there's a over a 500 watt surge to start it. And when it's running, probably about 50 to 60 watts, depending on what temperature you set this is, set this thing at. You know, which I set it at about, uh, uh, I think, two or, you know, setting two or three, just enough to keep things chilled. Uh, that's about all you really need. It just depends on, you know, if you're out in the Arizona desert, it's going to definitely, you know, play into the factor of how much energy you use. You know, if you're out there in the uh, 100 degree heat and this thing's sitting directly out in the sun, it's probably going to run semi-continuously. I have it in the garage right now, just um, in the shade. Uh, and I have just enough cord here to get to the solar panel. Again, this is uh, this is late afternoon, so I'm just kind of waiting for this thing to, to cycle. And uh, now let's, let's cheat a little bit here. Turn the setting up. Okay, setting, setting went down here. Um, so it cycled up, it went down to 13.7, now it's at 14.1. We were at about 14. So let's see how many watts we're getting with the solar panel. So it's probably so we're getting two watts there. So that's about half its energy. It's probably coming directly from the solar panel. So it's going pretty good. Now, if we were to disconnect the solar, I'll just disconnect the solar here real quick and show you what the operating voltage would be on the battery. So now we're at 12.9 uh, while it's running. You know, this is a fully charged battery, about 13.5 after the solar panels charged it. So now you're floating about 12.8, 12, 12.7, 12, somewhere in that range. If it gets down to about 12.4, you definitely want to, you know, shut it off and stop running your refrigerator because it can damage your battery. So now we'll put the solar back on. Solar back on, and now you can see our wattage is up, or our voltage is up. Went from 12.8 to 13.9, almost 14. So the solar panel is uh, definitely assisting this refrigerator from running, or uh, helping this refrigerator run. So that's good. So again, another trick when you go camping, if you don't want to use a cooler, there are other options out there. Um, this is this is what I would recommend. Now, I, I combine this system with that 300 watt rock pal. I didn't have the batteries out in the Dakotas with me. I just uh, played around with this here in the last month. So I'm looking forward to seeing how much uh, uh, energy I will have. I'm assuming this is enough for about 24 hours, enough to get me through to where I can, you know, recharge my batteries and my rock pal to keep me going for a weekend. So. Hopefully this helps you guys. Um, we will uh, look forward to doing another video here with the 300 watt Rockpel solar uh, uh, generator or storage station. We'll try that. And uh, we'll, we'll use these panels too. I did make do some makeshift little legs here for this Rockpel's panel. That's one of the only drawbacks. It doesn't have the, uh, the fold out legs like some of the other portable solar panel so I just used some scrap wood I had and I keep those with me and that gives me a pretty good angle uh, at the sun all right so this is Uper Jim signing off be sure to like this video and subscribe subscribe to the channel um, look forward to another video have a good day